is so exciting to me, being a part of First Baptist Church Morals Inlet, is I remember that our members get the fact that we are supposed to be ministers of the gospel. Each one of us, we have that, we have that calling on our life to bring the gospel to those that need to hear it, to encourage one another, to exhort one another. And so it gives my heart great delight when I see our church members encouraging, exhorting one another, and pushing each other towards Christ. And I was, I saw that this morning through an email. Um, the house of prayer that we have here at the church that meets on Sunday mornings to pray for the services, and at Sunday nights and the evenings to pray for things of our church, our nation, our world, everything at large, they send out an email every day, specifically one of the members of the House of Prayer sends out an email every day, challenging the House of Prayer to pray for a specific aspect that he pulls out from Scripture. And so this morning, his email is calling us to look at James chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. And I want to share with you the email today because it matches well, it meshes well with what we talked about on Sunday, about the condition of our heart being the problem in our world today, and if we want to fix the problem of our world, the answer is the gospel. The gospel is what makes the sinful heart become pliable and moldable. The sinful heart makes it righteous because of what Christ has done for us. And so let me read with you what is pulled out from James 4, 1 through 3, and then the paragraph that he gave to call us into action in response to James 4, 1 through 3. Here's what it says. What is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? Is not the source your pleasures that wage war in your members? You lust and you do not have, so you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives, so that you may spend it on your own pleasures. Here is what he wrote in explanation of this. How many times do we need to be reminded that our problems stem from issues that come from our hearts? Our hearts are despicably wicked and misleading. Our hearts contain our passions. Passions are almost always rooted in the flesh, and the flesh leads us into trouble. Always. If you want to know what is truly in your heart, see where it takes you when you let your mind wander. For most, our hearts lead us to things of the world, passions we learn and accept it from our life being more of the world than just in it because we have not concentrated on the things of God and on His path, but follow the path laid down for us by men, we end up in quarrels and conflicts, and the cycle is inevitable. What he's saying is exactly true, and exactly what we talked about on Sunday, is that the condition of your heart is going to show forth in your words and in your actions. And so as we think about the things that are happening in our world, I still want to draw you to the place where you look at your own heart, where you're honest with yourself, where I'm honest with myself about the condition of my heart. What is it leading me to do? What, what, Who is leading my heart? What is leading my heart? Is it me? Is it the Holy Spirit? There are times when when it's me. There, Hopefully the, the, the vast preponderance of time it's the Holy Spirit. But the point is we have to be honest with ourselves and see the condition of our heart because from the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks and the hands do. And so as I was reading this email this morning, I was reminding that each one of us needs to be pointed to the fact and the reminder that the source of our quarrels and conflicts among us are spurred from our hearts and the desires of our heart. And so this week, I want to challenge you to make sure that you know the condition of your heart. I want to challenge you to make sure that you are capturing your mind and your heart for Christ, pushing it towards pursuing to be more like Him in everything that you do. And if you want to point people, if you want to show people the answer to what is going in the world today, share the gospel. Help their hearts be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Share the message that can bring life. Share the message that can help their hearts live out a life that is godly and holy and pleasing and lives in such a way where we want to bring together the things that are divided. Help us to be controlled by the Holy Spirit, pushing people more and more towards the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's our heart's desire. That should be our heart's desire. And it's my prayer that in our church we will be filled with individuals, people who make up the church collectively, whose hearts are tuned to what God has called us to, not to the things that the world calls us to, which is division and strife and quarreling and murdering and hating and violence. The Lord calls us to call out to one another in love, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Have a great rest of the week. 
and may our hearts be made into the image of God. Bye -bye.